This is Fiona introducing the eighth webinar in our series of past winners and finalists in the Partners in Learning Forum. In this webinar we have Megan from Schoolnet, Megan Rodemeyer from Schoolnet, who is going to talk from the judge's perspective. Over to you Megan. So I was telling you that I've got to be a judge in all sorts of exotic places, but I'm sure that as a teacher listening to this presentation, you're busy thinking, how can I get to go to the Regional Innovative Teacher Forum? And if you're looking at my presentation now, you'll see the, the top three pictures all show Morocco, which is where this year's Middle East Africa Partners in Learning Forum is going to be. And if you look at the three pictures at the bottom, um, the one on the left is um, us having a great time in Jordan. The one in the middle is um, teachers in Mombasa in Kenya. And the one on the right is um, teachers in Mauritius. And actually you can see Fiona. She's the second one along on the, on the log. Um, but all of these regional forums are fantastic. They're life-changing um, opportunities for, um, for teachers. And I'm sure you're busy thinking, I want to go. How can I get to go there? So what I'm going to try to do in my presentation is talk you through the rubric and help you score the maximum points for your project so that you'll also get an opportunity to be part of a regional event. So to get to go to the regional event, you first have to be selected to go to the South African event. And how you do this is you need to come up with a project that uses technology to enhance teaching and learning. You then need to comp complete the PowerPoint entry template, which you can find on the SchoolNet website. And then that needs to be uploaded to the South African Partners in Learning Forum, um, which is on the Partners in Learning Network by the 12th of March. Um, it sounds all simple enough, but it can be quite a, a daunting process, especially for teachers who haven't entered before. Um, once you've got your, your pro project uploaded, we then select 20 finalists um, to attend the South African Forum. Um, it usually takes about a week to go through all of the entries that are received, um, and a team does this, um, and they use the scoring rubric um, to decide which of the, the projects that were submitted are the best 20. Um, once we've got the, the finalists, um, they all get to fly to the South African Forum. In the past couple of years, it's been in Johannesburg, but this year we're having it in Durban as part of the South African Basic Education Conference. Um, the forum will be taking place on Sunday the 1st of April, and then teachers who are finalists will stay on at Microsoft expense to be part of the South African Basic Education Conference. So that's part of the prize, getting to um, you attend a first-rate um, conference. At the forum, each finalist will um, show a poster describing their project. And I've included some photos of some of our previous um, winners and their posters that they've presented at the regional forum to give you an idea of the type of thing you'll need to produce. Um, then what, you'll put your poster up and the judges will go around spending 20 minutes interviewing each finalist. Um, we'll have a panel of about 10 judges to ensure that at least three judges spend 20 minutes um, with each of their finalists. Um, during this um, interview period, the judges would already have read through your PowerPoint entry, but this will now be an opportunity for them to ask you some questions about it and to hear it straight from the horse's mouth what you did in your project. Um, from the, the 20 finalists, um, the judges will all allocate scores according to the rubric. Um, the judges spend a full day in a workshop going through the rubric and going through examples of projects to calibrate the scoring process and to make sure that the judges are all on the same page. Um, the reason why we have this workshop is to ensure that the winners um, don't end up being the teachers who were scored by the most generous judges. Um, it's to ensure that no matter who judges your project, the scores you get are much the same. 
In addition to the three judges that come and interview the finalists, there's also a coordinating judge who assesses all the entries and who moderates the scores if required. So we do have somebody um, who's able to, to see if some judges have been particularly strict or particularly generous um, despite having attended the workshop and that person um, can moderate the scores. We then select winners in the following categories, extending learning beyond the classroom, collaboration, knowledge building and critical thinking, innovation in challenging contexts and cutting edge use of technology. Um, each of these um, category winners will receive a prize, but the best project overall will get to go to the regional forum. And the reason why we do it like that in South Africa is we find that in some years we get lots of entries um, that maybe have to do with collaboration and we get say very few entries um, that involve cutting edge use of technology. So we want to ensure that our best projects overall get to attend the forum. So we might have the person who came first and second in one category getting to go to the, the regional forum, but perhaps somebody who came first in another category not being amongst the top five. Um, here are some frequently asked questions. Um, the first one is, do I have to select my category? So teachers have written to me and have said, do I have to say that I'm entering for the um, cutting edge use of technology section or perhaps the knowledge building section? The answer is no. The best projects score well in a range of categories. We might find that somebody has used technology in an innovative way, but they've done this to promote knowledge building or collaboration. So it would be very difficult for them to select one category and only one in which to enter. The judges will see based on your score which category you've, you've done the best in and your prize will be awarded according to that. Another question that I'm often asked is can a pair or small group enter a project? And the answer is yes. Last year we had a pair who won from St. Cyprian's in Cape Town and the year before that we had a group of four teachers from Bloemfontein who entered a project together. So you definitely are welcome to enter as a pair or as a small group. The only catch is that if you enter as a pair or group you may have to share the prize. So where for example um, one of our partners is Dell and they've donated a, a laptop for the winning project um, we can't expect them to now suddenly donate another three laptops if four teachers win in one category. So you're welcome to enter as a small group, but be aware that you may have to share the prize. The next question um, I think I've already answered. Who gets to go to the MIA Partners in Learning Forum? And the answer I've already told you is our best five projects overall, um, which may or may not be the five category winners. So here um, I'm going to discuss what the judges are looking for. And what I've done here is I've taken the rubric, which you can find in the resources section on the Partners in Learning Network or on the SchoolNet website, and I've tried to break it down into a couple of simple questions that you can ask yourself related to, to each of the rubric criteria. The first um, item on the rubric is the structure of the project. This one's only out of four marks. But these are four marks that you may as well get for yourself. The first question that you need to ask yourself is, was it a long-term task? If you've done a series of lessons or a project over a couple of weeks or more, your project is going to score higher here than if your, um, if your entry was a one-off very simple lesson that took place in 30 or 40 minutes and that was the end of that. Another thing the judges will consider here is did the students plan their own work and did they get to direct their own learning? Here we'll see if the whole project was dictated and guided by the teacher or if the students or the learners got to have some say in what they chose to do. Um, another um, item that I think most South African teachers will score very well in is were the assessment criteria known up front? Did the learners know what they needed to do in order to achieve um, the highest possible scores for their assignment or project? Just like we are being upfront about the rubric for this competition in advance, we would hope that our teachers are also making the assessment criteria explicit to their learners at the outset. 
The next item on the rubric is design of the learning environment. Here we look for does the activity or project plan um, aim to develop 21st century skills? So have you um, tried to include collaboration, um, critical thinking, um, those sort of things there that as teachers we should tr strive to include. We also look for has the teacher used a sound pedagogical approach and has the activity been well thought out and planned in advance as opposed to some random lesson that doesn't seem to fit into um, a greater picture. Um, finally, we'll look at does the activity include creative or innovative teaching practices. Um, here we don't want to see rote learning or the kinds of tasks and activities we've seen many times before. We're looking for teachers that have tried something a bit new, a bit different, a bit fun and have incorporated that in their lesson. The next item that we look for is evidence of learning. We look for is there proof that the project was implemented. Um, it doesn't help if the teacher has got a great project plan but we can't see that that project plan was actually implemented. So we want to see samples of learner work, perhaps short little video clips, some photos of the learners actually doing the activity and then we'll know for sure that the, that the project that's been described to us actually happened. In looking at the student work that has been produced, we'll want to see if the students demonstrate 21st century skills. Do we see that they've actually um, been using those higher order thinking skills? And finally, we want to see if the learners are engaged in a range of tasks that include the creative uses of ICT. So here again, a longer term project, something that has involved more than one activity but related to a same theme, will score more highly than a one-off activity um, that's unrelated to other lessons. The next items on the rubric are out of 16 marks. So this is where the, the point scoring really comes in. And you'll see that the different items on the rubric tie up with the different um, award categories that we award prizes in. The first one that we look at is collaboration. And collaboration is not synonymous with group work. Um, we don't want to see projects where learners have produced something together, but for all we know, one um, person in the group produced the whole project single-handedly. We want to see genuine evidence of learners working with others. And we'll score even more points where those others are outside of the classroom. So not just group work within a class, but learners collaborating perhaps with children in other schools, where teachers have worked with other teachers, where there's some sign of um, cross-country um, cross collaboration that would do really well in this category. We also want to see if the learners share responsibility for the tasks that they've undertaken and the product that they've produced. Um, and finally, we want to see that the learners have made substantive decisions together so that there's been genuine talking and decision making and collaboration and learners really taking a, a shared interest in the project and being responsible jointly for the outcomes. The next category on the rubric is knowledge building and critical thinking and again it's out of 16 points. What we look for here is does the task require knowledge building? And this um, what we look for here is, does the task involve interpretation, analysis, synthesis, or evaluation? Has there been some genuine thinking going on, as opposed to learners just um, learning information by rote, or finding materials online and regurgitating those in another form? We also consider, is knowledge building the main requirement? Is that the, the real essence of the task at hand? Or is it um, you know, just one of the many byproducts? We also look at is the learning interdisciplinary or cross-curricular? And projects that go um, across learning areas score particularly well in this category. So if you've got other teachers at your school who teach other subjects and you can somehow collaborate on a project together, you will score really well in this competition um, as opposed to submitting a project where you've done the work all by yourself just in your class. The next item on the rubric is extending learning beyond the classroom. And here we look at are the learners working on a real world problem? Are they doing something that's going to make a real difference in their community, a real difference in their environment, supporting a real organization or a real cause that is genuinely meaningful to the learners? 
Um, then we look at does the project involve implementation in the real world? So it's no good if the learners are coming up with all of these creative ideas for um, creating global peace and ending world hunger, but then they're not actually doing anything to implement it. So here we would want to see implementation in the real world. And finally, we look at is the main requirement of the project pro problem solving, or is it just a, a sort of byproduct or a sort of secondary task? Moving on to the, the next slide, um, the, the last two categories are the use of ICT for learning, um, again out of 16 marks. Um, and here we look at is ICT used to support knowledge building, collaboration or learning beyond the classroom? And we, we specifically ask ourselves, does technology enable opportunities that would not have been possible without it? So um, when we look at the project, we think, mm, if the teacher didn't have access to the internet, or didn't have um, access to social media tools, um, or did they use um, Skype or email um, in a creative way that enabled collaboration with um, learners in another country that would not have been possible without technology, then that's the kind of project that would score really well here. And finally, we consider, have the tools been used imaginatively to support learning? So we all know that email can be used to send a letter and Skype can be used to have a, um, an online chat. But where somebody has taken a tool and has used it in an interesting or creative way that we haven't really seen before, that would score really good points in, the, in this category. The final item that we look at is the teacher as an innovator or change agent. And here we consider if the teacher has significantly changed the learning process through the use of ICT. So has technology been a catalyst for something really interesting and exciting happening in a classroom? We look at has the teacher provided opportunities for learners to lead their own learning? And again, this, this echoes um, a, sim, uh, a similar item in one of the early ca categories where we consider if the learners get some say in the, the um, project that they're producing. And finally, we look at, has the teacher facilitated engaging approaches to learning? Have the learners had fun? Have they done the activity with enthusiasm um, because they've genuinely felt that they're doing something meaningful and positive and have had a great time doing it? So that's the end of the rubric. Um, there are just a few more questions that you might want to consider. The first one is, can I enter a project that is not yet complete? Um, I've been asked this, this question a couple of times in the last few days by teachers who've said to me, March is so soon, how can I ever have a project ready by March? We do know that the closing date is early this year, so if you've got a project that you've planned and that you've started but you haven't completed it yet, please still enter it. As long as you've got some evidence that your project has been started, if you were to be judged a winner, there would still be some more time for you to complete your project before the regional forum. The next question is, how can a junior primary compete, a project compete with a high school project? So where you look at those things like um, collaboration, innovative use of technology, knowledge building and critical thinking, the judges realize that something that is, is really an intense higher order activity for a grade one child um, would not be um, as demanding for a matric student. And we take the age of the learners um, into account when we judge the, the competition. Um, I haven't got it on my slide here, but something else that we definitely take into account is the context in which the teacher is working. We know that teachers who come from well-resourced private schools um, maybe have easy access to the internet. They've got wireless access in every classroom, perhaps a, a smart board in every classroom, their own data projector, perhaps learners that, ha that have their own tablets or their own laptops that they can bring to class. And we know that it's far easier for teachers working in those contexts um, to do tasks and activities using technology compared to a teacher at a rural school or perhaps an under-resourced township school. And that definitely factors into the judging. So please don't be put off if you don't think that your school has got access to all the toys that you've seen some of the, the previous winners using. Um, the final question is, does a project have to be innovative in the sense that no one has ever done anything like it ever before? 
Um, in one way, I was quite sad when the competition um, changed its name from being the Innovative Teachers Forum to the Partners in Learning Forum, because I thought teachers, um, you know, wouldn't know that it was still the same competition. But where I am pleased is by losing the word innovative, teachers who are just doing really good work, coming up with really exciting activities, will still be encouraged to enter this competition, even if they don't think what they're doing is groundbreaking or unique in the sense that nobody has ever done it before. Um, that's the end of my, my slides. Um, the final couple of questions to consider is, are you already doing something that you can enter? Did you do something last year that you can enter this year? Now that you've seen the rubric and you know what the judges are looking for, can you turn a simple lesson into something more innovative? Can you tweak your project that you want to enter in such a way so as to score maximum points on the rubric? That's, that's really the secret, to look at the rubric and to make it work for you. See what's going to score you the best possible points in the category you think your project is the strongest in, and then go for it. See where you might have a gap and where you could perhaps beef up an aspect of your project and do that to try and make sure you score the best possible points. But finally, please don't be put off by the rubric and thinking your project's not good enough and you're not going to score the maximum points that you'll rather just give up and not even try. The only way you're going to win this competition is if you actually enter it. Um, Fiona's available to help. I'm available to help. If you have any more questions, please write to one of us and we can definitely look at your project idea and support you in any way that we can to ensure that you do well. Um, there's the email address where you can get more information. Um, and yes, there's my email address if you'd like to write to me. That's the end of my presentation, but I do look forward to receiving any. That was Megan Rodemeyer from Schoolnet speaking from her experience as a judge in the Partners in Learning Forum. Thank you for presenting for us, Megan, and good night, everyone.